There. Okay. There we go. That took long enough, didn't it? Okay. Oh. Sure did. <laughs> we are happy to see you. Yeah, I'm happy to see you guys too. I mean, I started this like seven or eight minutes ago, you know, and wow. yeah, this computer is like so slow. I mean, it took me three times to finally get it to actually work. It was like, you know, you know, Charles, as uh, uh, an uh, old dog, don't learn new tricks. You know that, so we understand. I see. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, all right. Anyway, we're open. Yeah, it's wanting me to close. Thank you. Do that. Thank you. We're here. We're going to stay for a while. <laughs> anyway, how's everybody doing? Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Good. Uh, Good. Let me close the day over. It's beautiful here, Shaw. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful day out. As long as you don't go out, it's chilly. <laughs> the sun is shining pretty good at it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It it is sunshiny and all. Let's see. What does it say about it was it was like in the twenties this morning. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. It was, it I, was, think we're, I think we're in the low 40s now. Are we in the low 40s now? It's bearable. Yeah, I haven't been out in the last yes. couple of hours, but uh, yes. let's see. Where did that go? Oh, here it is. Yeah. yeah, it's saying it's 45 in Atlanta now. So, okay, that's not too bad. Hi, Elsie Jester. How are you doing? Good. Good. Glad to hear that. So, let's see who's here. We, it says that there's 10 of us, okay? So let's see how true that is. Uh, so Armando, Elsie, Ilan, John, June, Robert, Susan, Bernice is here, and Eloise. Yay. Okay. So Bernice, are you showing yourself today? You're not talking to us. Well, no, yeah, no. Uh, Eloise has her camera turned off. Or video, but okay. Yes, I was busy doing something else. Hello, everyone. How you doing? I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. Well, you know, we got to check in on you. You know, just make sure everybody's doing okay. So, ah, there's Bernice again in in all of her fuzzy fuzziness. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What are you What are you doing, Bernice? I mean, you got. Like something over your video mm. camera or something, so we can't. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I have I have a band aid on top of it. Oh, okay. Because mm. I mean, we can kind of see something there, but yeah, it's. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. It's a little blurry picture. Mm. Not. Uh -huh. Now I'm holding it with my finger. You can't see anything. No. See, we put your finger over it now, and we're in the dark again. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I I'm going to show my be be beautiful face again, I promise. Oh, okay. All right. Well, you know, we, we like seeing you, but, you know, if it's, it's okay. Um, anyway, speaking of seeing things, uh, we're going to see some things today. Um, yesterday, uh, remember mm -hmm. that the subject of pointillism came up, right? Hey, Robert. Yes. Yep. Yeah, Bob. Yeah, Bob. Bob did a piece. So. Leave, leave, leave it to me to do some damage here. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no damage. No damage. But you know that that again, you know that kind of brought up an interesting thing to look at um, as far as painting goes, right? And uh, so I wanted to share with you some of the some of the paintings that I saw when I went to the Chicago Art Institute. Uh, that fall into that category of pointillism, okay? And so I'm going to share those real quick, and then we're going to get on to looking at everybody's work. And there's not a lot of them, but, you know, there's a few. Um, but there's some artists that you've never heard of, and you may actually want to write some of these names down. So if you have a, a piece of paper or something like that. Um, nope, nope. <laughs> All right. So um, let's reduce okay, the faces, though. Okay. All right. 
<laughs> so everybody see, uh, you know, a painting that I'm sure you're all familiar yeah. with. Okay. And this yeah. is uh, George uh, Surratt. And, um, you know, I've done a fair amount of reading about Surratt and looked at a fair amount of his work. Um, I had not realized that he died very young, actually. He died at the age of 31. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And it was uh, mm -hmm. from some kind of um, like pneumonia or some kind of infection. And um, mm -hmm. literally two weeks later, his, uh, you know, his son passed away from the same thing. So, mm -hmm. but for as young as he was, the, uh, you know, he, he turned out a, you know, quite a fair amount of work, actually. And uh, considering that this particular painting right here took actually two years to paint, mm -hmm. um, it's pretty amazing. Uh, and when mm -hmm. you go back and you look at a body of his work, I think they had, they were showing about 185 paintings for him. And the, the interesting thing was, if you look at this painting, you'll find about eight or 10 other paintings that were painted at this very spot, uh, not in this style, you know, more as a study. They were much smaller. And, you know, he did, you know, probably a good 10 or 15 studies of, of this place before he painted this painting. And, and this was kind of the final work. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he's got a study of this lady standing here. Uh, he's got a uh, study of the couple, you know, uh, well, uh, actually these ladies right here on the grass. Um, and there's, like I said, there's about eight or 10 of them. And, uh, you know, it, it might be this whole composition, but it's really just the two of them there or just her standing there or just this group right here. And, you know, he would go out on different days and then he would paint the people that were there you know, and, and the place. And then when he decided to do the final painting, he kind of went through those and he picked, you know, different, uh, you know, different couples and things and put them in the composition, you know, to create this. Um, and like I said, this, this was a two year long effort, you know, just this one painting by itself. Um, now, obviously he was doing other things along the way, but, uh, now, this is a photo that I took and it was actually at the Chicago Art Institute. And uh, I'm going to blow this up and it will give you an idea, um, you know, of how, how kind of intricate, you know, the, uh, you know, all the little paint strokes were. Now, this is a very, very large painting. I'm, you know, we're talking really big. Um, so these paint strokes on here, or dots, or whatever you want to call them, little dots and dashes, um, they're really much larger, you know, than they appear here. Um, you know, they're about the size of maybe about a number six, or number eight brush, and it's just a short little paint stroke. Um, but then it all, you know, you step back and it all falls together and becomes this image. So... And there, there's quite a few layers of paint on here. And notice that, you know, he, he laid down the paint in kind of a directional way to kind of indicate some volume or some form, like here on the umbrella, how this is kind of angled and curved. And then here in the trees, how it's a little more irregular um, and kind of creates these kind of soft round masses um, you know, same thing here with the clothing, see, you know, he's, he's very aware of not only the color and the value that he's putting down, but he's also putting down the paint in a deliberate direction, um, you know, to kind of describe the form. So, but it's a, uh, you know, beautifully done painting, but you know, I love when, all the I, I love all the clean edges that he's. I love all the clean edges that he's got in this painting. I mean, everything is is 
the foreground, the people that he wants to emphasize are all just sharp. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You know? <clears throat> yeah, there, there's really nice value contrast in here and really nice use of color and also uh, a play of temperature, you know, cooler temperatures here in the shadow, you know, warmer temperatures in the light. And, uh, and it's very consistent, you know, he's done a beautiful job with that. Now, that being said, I found paintings, you know, that were in this approach or in this technique that I liked much better. <laughs> You know, and that's at the Chicago Art Institute, very same same place. Um, and I I got to see these. Now none of these were on the scale of this painting. They were all kind of medium sized paintings, I would say. And I want to start you off with this guy right here. His name is uh, Henry Edmund Cross. And uh, you know, interesting interesting fellow. Uh, this is the painting. It's called. Uh, Beach of Cabasson. And, uh, you know, it's a beautiful painting. I mean, just the composition of it. And if you really look at it, it's really kind of a duotone painting. It's basically, basically orange and blue uh, are the two colors that were, you know, kind of predominant. And so he has a definite separation between warm and cool. Notice that all the colors in the background tend to feel generally like this is overall a very cool temperature. And everything here in the foreground and middle ground is really warm overall. And uh, so a nice separation in temperature, uh, good separation in value. Notice how the values are closer in the background and that helps soften it and sit it back. Um, the surprising thing about this is, and I'm gonna blow it up a little bit. Well, I don't have to really blow it up. I can just go to the next photo. Um, if you look very carefully at how he did this, you know, look at all the little paint strokes and how he's using these complementary colors, including, including, you know, these direct complements of this sort of orangish, brown which is very neutral and this very kind of neutral blue and how they really kind of create an overall gray feeling to that area um, same thing in the hair you know again it's a lot of the same colors see but just varying degrees you know some you know some is you know some of it is warmer in temperature some of it's cooler and lighter and you find that all throughout the painting. See, like the shadow side of the leg, right? He could have mixed up a dark gray or something, but, he, you know, he's, again, using that same kind of, you know, warm brown against this very dark sort of neutral blue in here. So, you know. Really nicely done. Um, am, am, I, am I seeing outlines in some of these? Yeah. Figures? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, he definitely put an edge, you know, on this particular figure. He didn't seem to do it um, on the other figures quite so much. Let's blow this up. This is the whole painting. Come on. Yeah. So you see, he really kind of sharpened the edge up here. And then mm -hmm. that makes everything else back here, you know, feel really soft. And so the figures really kind of pop forward. And you know exactly, you know, what you're looking at, which is, you know, the three figures right here being the focal point. The thing that kind of amazed me though, in, in this particular painting, was um, look at the way, you know, he's, he's used color, you know, warmer color into this kind of neutral blue gray that he had mixed up. And then these kind of greenish colors, you know, in, you know, in this darker, more neutral blue as well. 
to just give it a mm -hmm. little intensity and kind of pull this area further forward, you know, than all of this. And so, you know, he's created a kind of a nice, if you just look in this section of the painting, you know, there's a really nice sense of transition between background, middle ground, and foreground. So he's, he's somebody you might want to, you know, go take a look at more of his work. Um, you know, there's more out there. And, uh, you know, this is, you know, this is the piece that I saw in the Chicago Art Institute. So I had some reference on it. Okay. Another artist, okay, uh, George Lemen. And uh, this really, now, unfortunately, this piece uh, was under glass. I don't know why they put it under glass, but it was. And, um, you know, it's on canvas. Uh, so I really don't see the reason to do that, but. You know, that's just the way the piece was. But look at all the different color in here. You know, there's there's nothing that's like a pre-mixed flesh tone or anything. It's all like, you know, pinks and blues and greens and grays and reds and purples. Um, and again, you know, you can see how he applied the paint and how he's layered, you know, one color over another, you know, to begin to create all these different transitions of color and, and value. And uh, pretty much so the same thing is true in the background. You know, there's quite a variety of color back there, but really when you pull back and you look at it overall, it all kind of falls together and it stays soft and it stays back behind her and then she moves forward. How you made that? How do you make what? It looked like that with those little, little things, how? Yeah, with, well, you know, you could use <laughs> the end of a stick. You could use a small brush. Uh, you could use the handle, the end of the brush, you know, instead mm -hmm. of where the hair is. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Could you use a Q-tip? Um, no, probably not, because the Q-tip would suck up too much paint. You want something to transfer the paint off rather than, you know, and that's kind of the problem with a lot of the brushes, you know, you need, you'd need a really stiff kind of oil type brush so that the, the paint wouldn't get caught up in the bristle, but would just kind of come off kind of easily. Here's that face again. And see, you know, he, he achieves, you know, this really nice sense of volume and form in the face. It doesn't feel flat. Um, you see the features, but there's no real hard outlines on anything. So, yeah. Here's these are very big pictures, though, right? So you can stand back and look at no. them. No, they're, you know, the, no, the last two that we saw probably weren't more than, you know, probably, I'd say the biggest one is probably around about 30 by, you know, 24, 30, something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Including this painting right here, which, which is probably like about a 24, 30. So it's really, it's, you know, it's big, but it's nothing like, you know, the piece that Surratt did, which is, you know, wall size. I mean, it's literally the whole wall. Um, okay. And then the last one I'll share with you is this guy right here. Now, there's, you know, something just really kind of quirky about this whole painting, but it's, you know, it's a really nice painting. I really like the design of it and stuff. So, and this is by, by Maurice Dennis. And, um, you know, he, he lived a good long time, but this is the whole painting. And so it's, it's sort of a, a scene entering into like, you know, a garden area, you know, and back into this 
house or whatever. And you've got all these figures that, you know, they could be like nuns or somebody like that. Um, and then you've got, you know, this couple here and uh, they, they seem to be grieving, you know, possibly, you know, somebody got, you know, somebody died, got buried, something. I'm not quite sure what this is really all about. Yeah. Uh, this is Easter mystery is the title of it. So it doesn't really give you, you know, I mean, you know, exactly the why and wherefore here. But still, I like the way that it's painted. It's kind of stylized, you know. Um, but again, you know, painted in sort of that pointillist approach. And again, was you know, pointillism a big movement? Pardon? Was pointillism a big movement? Well, it's one of those things that you know came about toward the middle to the end of the impressionist movement. It's part of impressionism because Surratt was an impressionist. Um, but uh, you know, Pizarro. Um, was a, another painter who kind of painted in a almost pointillistic style at times. Um, but it, it made quite a bit of, of an impact because it was based on sort of this theory of optics about what colors do, you know, when they're next to each other and how they vibrate and how they work together. And, uh, you know, that caught a lot of people's interest around that time you know, which is really around like the end of the 1800s, beginning of the 1900s. And uh, it made a fairly large impact on American Impressionism, uh, but it also kind of carried over into a lot of other art movements, you know, such as, you know, the abstract art movement, things like that. Uh, so it, it ended up having a lot of influences in the end. Anyway, I thought I would share those with you. Any anybody got any thoughts about any of those? Like them? Don't like them? Other way. Okay. You know, other than Bob, anybody feeling inspired now to go make little dots on a canvas? I don't have the patience. Yeah, that's that's kind of the thing with me. You know. Um, that particular approach, you really, really have to be very patient. And, you know, it's, it's, it's not like you're going to sit down and paint it all at once, you know. The mm -hmm. advantage of it, though, and I can see using kind of that approach in certain areas of the painting, if you want a very soft effect, you can certainly get it that way. You know? Kind of this nice sort of atmospheric effect to, to the painting. Um, you know, it's just well, working working in scratchboard kind of gave me a little bit development of patience because scratchboarding is a very time consuming and patience oriented art form. Uh -huh. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, kind of like pen and ink, you know, pen and ink and, you know, doing uh, what they call stippling. Yeah. That takes a very, very long time as well, you know. Now, it's going to get you an effect that you can't get otherwise, but, you know, you just have to kind of know, you know, what it will do for you and maybe when to use it, you know, and maybe when not to use it. So, at any rate, yeah, he, Bob, uh, Bob's done, you've done a lot of uh, really things that take patience, even the airbrushing and the other things yeah. you've done. I mean, yeah, you have a lot more patience than I would have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bob, Bob has a lot of self-control. You know, he's not one of these. I'm just going to jump in there and start throwing paint around. Right. That's me. Go ahead and go for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's not just you. I mean, you know, I, I have a tendency myself, you know, I just want to get in there and put something down and like, you know, say what I'm going to say. And, and enough is enough, you know. 
I don't want to necessarily, I don't know, you know, for me, it's like, I'll keep going back to paintings um, over and over again, you know, and just working on them a little at a time. But, you know, it's at some point, I just kind of lose momentum, you know, and they'll sit there for a while. You know, and I mean, when I say a while, kind of like that one thing I was talking about the other day, it, like two years, right? And, you know, little by little, I would get back to it. I'd do a little bit more and then I'd set it aside and I wouldn't look at it for another month or two. And, uh, and eventually, you know, I mean, this is uh, over this holiday break, you know, I dug, I dug it out from under a lot of other stuff and it's like, yeah, I need to finish that. So. And I went back and finished it up, but you know, it's it's one of those things of it either for me, I either get it down and I like what I've done and I'm happy with it, and or it's one of those things that I'll get to a certain point and I'll just set it aside, you know, because I'm kind of at a point where I don't really know where I want to go with it, and uh, and I just need to take a break from it, get away from it, so I can kind of figure that out and then I'll come back to it eventually. You know, the other thing about coming back to it is uh, we mix the paint again. And I'm like, what color did I use to get that? You know? Yeah. Well, I've, I've been mixing paint long enough to know mm -hmm. that if you just have a basic set of colors out there and you keep the same colors out on your palette, um, mm -hmm. it's not that hard to get back to where you were. Mm -hmm. You know, it just takes a lot of practice mixing paint. And I've certainly had that over the years, you know. So I've got I've gotten to a point where, you know, if I see a color, I can I can pretty much so mix it, you know, just about dead on. Um, without really a lot of effort. So every once in a while I'll get something that kind of throws me for a loop, but for the most part. You know, I don't really have a problem with the actual mixing of the color. Um, so, so walking away from something for a while and then coming back to it, yeah, it's not not that big of a deal for me. Um, anyway, let's let's start looking at what you guys sent in. And uh, I don't know, I don't think Naomi is here, um, but. Uh, do you, any, any of you guys remember this? Yes. Yeah, yeah. definitely, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. For some reason she sent that in, I don't, I don't know why. But what this is, is uh, this is basically, you know, how I mix flesh tones. And it's really, mm -hmm. you know, here's kind of the standard palette that I keep, keep out. And, um, and then here are the four, basic colors that I use to influence my flesh tone mixtures, which are uh, a cool red, something like an alizarin crimson or a, a permanent rose, a warm red, like a cadmium red, um, you know, cadmium red light, cadmium red medium, you know, either of those will do, uh, dioxin violet, and then a uh, sap green. Now with the sap green, you know, um, you know that's a that's a pretty good green to use. Um, I've kind of dropped putting sap green on my palette for the most part, and so now I'm using viridian. And what I find with viridian is I can't use straight viridian in that mixture. I usually have to take it, add a little yellow to it to warm it up, and and that will be the green that I'll actually mix into the flesh tones. Um, but, you know, basically I just start with, you know, a Naples yellow and a cat orange and make a base. And then from that base, I'll start adding these colors. Mm. You know, like in this case, I'll take the red and the green, mix it together, and make this dark brown. And on one side, you've got a little more red. On the other side, you make a little more green. And, you mm. know, look at the variety of color you can get out of that. And then the same thing will happen <laughs> on this side as well, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you'll take, you know, this mixture and mm -hmm. then you'll use either, 
you know, a cool red or a warm red. And again, you can make, you know, um, quite a variety, you know, of color out of that. Um, pardon? Somebody have a question? Okay. Any? No, no. No, okay. All right. So yeah, like I said, I don't know why she sent that in, you know, but she did. Um, and if she ever shows up again, we'll have to ask her about that. Um, uh, it, 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 it may have been because before Christmas, you were looking at some flesh tone that I sent in and you were telling me that my flesh tone was, was a little off. Ah. And they were, yeah, so she, you, you know, yeah, she may have been, been responding to that. Yeah, that's yeah I think I think I think well, like like three layers or something like that, and she was like, and you were like, those colors are not quite flesh tones. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That 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 was, that was before Christmas, I think. Yeah. All right. Well, it's kind of funny that I would say that you know a a color couldn't be a flesh tone because basically flesh tones can be almost anything. Well, you you might you may have said mine were too orange or too something. I don't know. Yeah, it, it, maybe. It, it, yeah. yeah. Anyhow, uh, so we're going to start at the bottom of the list today, and this is uh, Susan Nadair, and this is the uh, mouth drawings that she did uh, from the class when we were drawing mouths. And you know, she's got a lot of the shape of the lips. Uh, what she seems to be missing here, she's she's got a little bit of the orbit of the mouth. But she doesn't really have a good, strong feeling for that really being as round, you know, as, you know, I kind of like it to be. Um, again, you know, she's kind of just focused on on the lip part itself. And if you're if you're trying to do a mouth. You know, the lips are only a part of that, you know, that orbit that the mouth sits on is really kind of the more important part of it, uh, because everybody's mouth will be, you know, that you'll see that orbit of the mouth either a little more or a little less on, on different people, you know, depending on the structure of their face. So, um, you know, if you're drawing mouths, you know, think more about what it sits on than just the shape of the lips itself. Um, you know, we saw this before we left, and this was Surin. Uh, this is the kind of the setup that he was working on this painting. And as you can see, it's, you know, it's a pretty good sized painting. Um, and he was going to do, well, I got a, I got something from him that said basically he had done something here in the foreground uh, because this guy still feels a little bit like he's just kind of floating out there. You know, we don't really know what he's standing on here. Yeah. And that would, that would kind of help really, I mean, he's close to us, but it would also help kind of separate the landscape out so that, you know, from here, there'd be a, a part that we're, we're at, and then this would be a little further away, then that's a little further away than that. And, you know, you can move on back through the composition. So, so that's where he kind of left it. Uh, is Rebecca here? No. No Rebecca Pinkney today? Mm. Yeah. What is that? A calendar? No, this is uh this is kind of a layout. She's she's in the middle of doing a, a children's book, which are uh, you know, animals that are all the letters of the alphabet. And oh, so yeah. So this is just her her kind of concept or idea. Um you know, and some nice little thumbnail sketches. Let's see if we can blow them up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So R is for rooster, you know, Q is for quail, P is for pelican, uh, you know, H is for hedgehog. So. Mm -hmm. It looks like it could be, you know, kind of really fun little idea. She does a lot of stuff like that for her uh, grandchildren. And then these are Rebecca's drawings of 
mouths. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you see with these, like on this one in particular, you know, she's indicated a little bit of the jawline and the structure of the nose. So you kind of get this sense that he's sitting, you know, on this kind of rounded shape in here. Uh, she's got a little bit of that on each of these. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like the number five. Yeah. You like the number That's five? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the top. Five. Yeah. Oh, at the very five. Okay. Right up here. Yeah. 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 And again, you know, because you've got the filter in here, yeah. you kind of get a sense of, you know, this part kind of protruding out a little bit, you know, and then under the chin mm -hmm. goes in, and then you get the uh, chin below it. So. So yeah, she did pretty well with those. Um, here's Naomi's clown that she sent us, but uh, she's not here to talk about it. So uh, June, is June Wang here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm here. Yay! Okay. <laughs> yeah, you sent in a whole bunch of stuff. Okay. So <laughs> so here here's your drawings of the mouth. Okay. And I kind of have the same criticism that I had of Susan, okay? You drew the shape of the lips, but then you kind of forgot about all this stuff out here that it sits on. And, you know, you have, some of these are a little more curved and have a little more form in them than others, um, but they're kind of flat still because they, they don't really sit on a round shape yet. So. Okay. You know, it's kind of important to get that structure, no. you know, that they actually begin to sit on. No. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. But you know, you've got the you've got the actual structure of the lip. You know, you pay you know pretty good attention to that. It's just again, the the key is you want it sitting on something. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just like the eye. Okay. You know, you can't do oh, just right. sort of the outline of the opening of the eye. You've got to get mm -hmm. that eyelid in there and you've got to get that feeling of it sitting on a ball to a curve oh. or wraps around it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so work on those a bit, you know, and, and like go from the bottom of the nose to where the chin is, you know, and that way you've got, you know, all that structure that you have in there to explain what the mouth is doing. Okay. Um, yes. And then you have, you have your, uh, I think this is a tiger. He's got stripes on one end of him. Um, and he's wearing a mask. Is there a reason that he's wearing I a mask? I love him. I love him. I love him. <laughs> this, this year is tiger year. Oh, year of the tiger. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Right. So this is Chinese capital. It's like a tiger year piece. Mm-hmm. Means. Okay. <laughs> All right. And and you know, obviously he's you know doing the right thing. He's wearing a mask and you know <laughs> trying, trying not to break yeah, what, 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 what does the symbols mean that, that are on the bottom left? Oh here? The calligraphy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what does that yeah. say here? Uh, this is the tiger. Yeah. You're this the is tiger? A bit, yeah, tiger, you're a tiger. A piece, half of the uh, four capital Chinese capital is a, a piece. Okay. Oh, okay. We need a piece. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, piece is piece is good. You know. <laughs> we'll we'll take I a little love piece. Him. I love him. Yeah. Little day walking. <laughs> yep. Yeah, he's definitely got an attitude. You know, yeah, I love you. <laughs> okay, so so now we're gonna go a little bit to the darker side of June, and uh, mm -hmm. so tell me what's going on here. Oh, uh, this is a flower, the little birds and the, the light on the, in the flower. Oh, it landed in the flower. Oh. Yeah. All right, because it kind of looks like he's laying there dead in the flower, right? <laughs> okay. And you know, I couldn't quite figure out. It's like. You know, because he, he looks upside down, you know, like he's laying on his back. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because it's like, you know, here are his feet, you know, so he's laying on his back, kind of like he's dead, you know. 
And I was like, this no, not the bag. This is uh, oh, okay. Yeah. This is, uh, <laughs> but uh, the here is uh, like uh, suppose uh, she's mouse. Yeah, well, the mouth looks upside down because the beak. <laughs> See, now he looks okay. right side up. Okay. Oh. Oh right. yeah. Mm -hmm. I see that. Okay. He's upside down. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, he's just kind of laying around on the flowers. It's like, uh, oh, you know, I know I'm a hummingbird, but I'm not so energetic today. I think I'm just going to kind of, you know, become a, you know, a flower potato, you know, instead of a couch potato. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Yeah, I, I saw that. I was kind of curious about it. Like, what's going on there? There's got to be a story there somewhere. Okay. And so, what kind of flower is this, June? Do we know? I don't know. I saw the, the photo. Uh-huh. And and did it have was the bird there in yes. the photo? Oh, okay. Yeah. All yes. right. So you didn't just add it in. It was actually there. No, no, yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. Is there? Okay. Huh. I'd be interested in seeing that photo sometime. Kind of figure out what's okay. going on with that bird. I will send to you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, you can send it to us, so we can all see it. That's true. You can send it all. Okay. Over. Or just send it to me, and I'll share it next. You know, mm -hmm. next Thursday yeah. or whatever. Okay. Now this is nice. You know, this is a, a very nice drawing. You know, you're practicing doing ellipses and cylinders and stuff like that, and you got a kind of a nice sense of of dimension in here. Um, really, the only thing is, it's like when you drew this. I'm guessing you kind of had it laying down on a table because it's kind of distorted. You see that? How do you look? Yeah. It kind of goes off to the right, you know, from left to right. So that tells me you had the paper laying down flat on the table while you were drawing. Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> I... That's that's what happens when you do that. You know, things okay. get distorted. Yeah, you said that before. I, always... I did. Yes, you I remember you said that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So while you, while you're drawing, try to get a board uh -huh. and elevate your drawing so it's at an angle or or you know it's, it doesn't have to be straight yeah. down in front of you, you know. Uh -huh. But if, if it's like at least a forty five degree angle or so, you'll be able to see it better and you'll get less distortion in the drawing. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. But the actual technique that you use. And the way that you use the pencil, your line work, stuff like that is all really nice. Thank you. So, you know. Um, and then you've got, you know, now I call this a, a Christmas landscape. And the reason I called it a Christmas landscape, yeah. this tree right here, which reminded me of a Christmas tree. So what, what's the story with this? Not a real story. I just uh, uh, got the photo. Somebody took the photo. Okay. I, yeah. Do you know where this is? It, it's in Europe. It's in Europe. Somewhere. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So this is the all. How to say it? It's not a painting. It's not. Uh, this I used the medium. It's the uh, acrylic. Acrylic, uh -huh. yeah. Acrylic. Okay. It's, oh. it's very uh, easy to dry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it so dries very quickly. I do it. I cannot uh, like mix together uh, like a printing is, uh, is good. How to do that? Mm -hmm. Well, my general comment on this would be one, more paint, you know, um, to some of your paint here. It's kind of thin, mm -hmm. you know. You got some okay. some paint built up, but you mm -hmm. know you have to kind of work it in layers. You know, you put down, okay. you know, you put down like your first pass, and then you keep modifying the color and you know tweaking it until you get it the way you know you want it. The problem is with acrylic is you don't really know that you have it to where you really want it until at least fifteen minutes after you put the paint down. Yeah. 
because the paint has got to dry, and by the time it does, it usually gets darker. Just, just oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so it may look bright when you first put it down, mm -hmm. then come back 20 or 30 minutes later, it's kind of dried flat and dull. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. I cannot control that. Well, I don't know it, how to control. Yeah, it just, well, practice. <laughs> If if you Practice, work, okay. yeah, if you work with that medium a lot, you kind of get used to the color shift, and and you kind of compensate for it, you know, okay. over time. But but you really have to kind of work with it quite a bit to get really good and and used to what what the paint does. Mm. Um, you know, the thing I like about acrylic is that it dries really quickly. The thing I hate about acrylic is that it dries really quickly. <laughs> Too <Right>. quick. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know, it's kind of, in some places, yeah. it's good that it dries quickly. In other places, yeah, eh, yeah, yeah, you don't want it to dry that quickly. Yes. You know, because you can't manipulate it. You can't really kind of play with it. Okay. Well, I, I've, I've learned to use that me medium. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh, to kind of slow it down. The only yeah. thing about the medium is sometimes it seems like it never dries. Yeah, well, it, you know, and the thing with acrylic, unlike oil, is that the weather, you know, the amount of humidity in the air and the air temperature really affect, you know, how the acrylic handles. Um, you know, like on some, you know, if you're indoors in your studio and the humidity is fairly constant and stuff like that, you know, it's usually you get used to handling it. And, and it works fairly well. But if you tried to go outside and do that very same painting, uh, you know, you're going to find that everything just dries almost like as soon as you put it down. Uh, or yes. if it's like a really cold, <laughs> wet, rainy day like we had, a, you know, a couple of days ago, you know, the acrylic will stay wet forever. <laughs> you know, it just, it just seems like, you know, something that you expected to be dry in 10 minutes, maybe three hours later, you know, it's, it's set, but it took a long time to get there. Mm. And again, you know, weather really affects it, it really does. Mm. So, okay. Yeah. So you got to just kind of account for a lot of different factors with acrylic. Uh, it's, you know, it's, you know, it's a good paint, but it takes, you know, it takes a lot of practice getting used to it, <laughs> you know, and once you're used to it, it's fine. <laughs> but it's, it just takes a lot of practice. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank and there's, you. Yeah. There's some things that you can do with it that are, are really nice. You know, I mean, if, if you like really bold color and real direct painting and stuff like that, acrylic is great for that. But if you, if you want to blend or do like a lot of subtle or soft edges, things like that, acrylic yeah. is not good at that. <laughs> yeah. uh, I see. Okay. I got it. Yeah. yeah. So so, you know, it's, it's like anything else. It's got its pluses and minuses, okay? Um, but let's, let's, let's talk about this particular painting, okay? So this is in Europe, and it's a landscape, okay? So I want to point a couple things out, all right? Now, when you look at it, the composition is pretty nice, you know? Your eye kind of starts over here in, like, the lower left, and you kind of come in, kind of in this little pathway right here. And you, you know, you get to the tree here and then you get to this V shape uh, and then you're looking off in the distance. And I'm kind of guessing that that might be water, could be. Yes. Um, yeah. And then you've got, you know, the, the hillsides and the mountains, you know, on the other side of the lake or, or whatever that body of water is. Um, you know, you're also, this kind of slopes up and takes you over here to the house and then from the house, you kind of get, you know, moved back over here into the peaks and things like that. And you got this nice V shape right in here in this in the sky, you know, which kind of tells you where to go, you know, which is really right here is where you're headed to. Um, so the composition, like I said, the way it's laid out, you know, it's really kind of nicely designed. Your shape yeah. the proportions in there all kind of work really nicely. The thing that is working against you here, okay, is the color mm -hmm. and how you mix the color. Yes. Because 
this being so far away, I don't know that I would want it that dark. See? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, so, I mean, it can all be in shadow, but maybe the shadow isn't mm. as dark as you've made it. Um, mm. Because you see the value here is equal to the dark in the, in the window of the house, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. And remember, we've talked about color and value before and you can't just take this color and put it everywhere in the painting because yeah, when yeah. you do that it flattens out the painting and that's kind of what's happened here because okay. here it is and it's close to us and then mm -hmm. you've got this very same color here so that tells us that this is no further away than that window and then the top mm -hmm. of the mountain is no further away than the window and then these shadow sides of the hills and things are no further away than the window. And so you see, it's made a flat space out of it. See, mm -hmm. these all have to be different because they're different distances okay. away from us. Now they can be similar, but the value mm -hmm. has to change. The intensity has to change as well to really get okay. that to move backward for you, okay? Okay, I got it, thank yeah. you. So I want you to do something and everybody how, do how I can fix it. I cannot fix this at all, oh, right? Sure you can. Oh, okay. Yeah you, yeah, you can mix a little more paint. You can change the value of this and this and this, the value okay. and the intensity. So you leave this alone. <laughs> oh. Just okay. make this a little bit more muted. Okay. And maybe not, you know, even if it stayed as dark, you know, if it were more <laughs> muted, Instead of okay. intense, it was uh -huh. back, which means that this here has to be even more muted, and then so do okay. these than this because this is closer to us, right? Okay, I got it. No, you can mix. Okay. Yeah, you. It's acrylic paint, so you can always mix more acrylic paint and put on top of it. Okay. Oh, okay. That's yeah. Thank you. Not a problem. Um, okay. And acrylic likes to stick to acrylic <laughs> really well. Actually. Okay. Yeah. So that's okay. not and, excuse me. Can you paint oil over acrylic? Yes, you can. Great. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, you can put oil paint on top of acrylic. You cannot put acrylic on top of oil paint. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, this is good to know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. So let's say June. Let's say that uh -huh. you didn't. Let's say that you didn't want to mix more acrylic up, let and okay. you know, and I and you have some oil paint. You could take some oil yeah. paint and just put a glaze over this and mute that and and lighten it. All of this this whole area back here, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You could okay. Push all of that back, you know, with a glaze of oil paint over it, or maybe a couple of different glazes. Okay. Okay. So that's another okay. way of handling it, but then that makes it a mixed media piece. Yeah. yeah, thank you. All okay. right. And then we have, okay, Miss Jean Goldstein. You hear Jean? I saw you. I'm here. There you go. Okay, I was waiting. All right, so, uh, you know, this is a nice little autumn, uh, you know, landscape, and you've got water in it, you've got a reflection in it, okay? Um, overall, you know, I mean, you've got some real strong darks back here and all in the hillsides, and, you know, that can happen at times, depending on the weather conditions and all. But I guess my question is, you know, it, it makes these colors look more intense and brighter, but... It's, it's kind of because of the contrast here, it's kind of flattening out the painting and you want a little more contrast up here than you do here um, because this is actually closer to you, right? Well, it's a kind of a scenario that uh, it, it's uh, like a large uh, mountain or tree or something that's shattering the water. It's yeah. turning that down because I really wanted the very bright against the very dark. It just, I've never done that before. And I was just mm -hmm. trying to, to see uh, the effect that I could get with it, which I liked. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the value part of it, as dark as it is, I think is okay. 
but if you could now this is in watercolor right yes okay um, we made this like the, the water was shadowy uh closer to me because i really wanted the eye to go in that last third of the upper third of the picture mm -hmm. yeah right here um yes. yeah so here's the thing you know if you didn't change the value of this, but if you lowered the intensity of it, see, You're then talking the, about the, map or the, trees? the mountain, yeah, the dark. Okay. Yeah, no, okay. the, no, the trees are fine. You want to leave those okay. alone. Yeah. It's, it's what's behind it. See, if, if yeah, you purposely just, made that dark to try and bounce the brightness of the leaves to make them really pop. Okay, but the the you can't issue, show oil with the light of uh, gray background or yeah uh, <laughs> yeah the, the issue here <laughs> is with the intensity of the color right and the, and the value okay uh, the value can stay dark but the intensity needs to get lower okay you know in other words it can't be you can't really see that kind of purpley or bluish color in there it's got to feel a little more neutral. You know, you kind of got it like right here. All right, where is your, I don't, all right, I see it, okay. Right over here. Yeah, okay. See, that's gray enough and see it sits back, right? Right. Yeah, but this is, is like really intense, okay? Right. And then the trees are really intense, right? right? Now these are across a lake from us and the, the thing is the reflection and the water right here is closer to us so what you would generally see is that the intensity in this area and the right. contrast in this area would be much higher than it would be here. Okay. Because of that. I leave it down because I really wanted it the eye to go more up. Okay. And it so and I it mean, will. I know okay. it's not logical. Yeah. But Shh. Quiet. But it, uh, I just wanted to add a draw further in the upper part. In the upper part. Okay. Yeah. And and what saying, I, I, I know it's illogical, but I, I think I could live with it. Yeah. In order to just get the, the uh, color that I really wanted in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like a little of one thing to get another thing. I know that's, that's really illogical, but. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Well, but and I and see what you're saying with that, with that, yes. Okay. And normally, I would paint in that direction, but I just tried something different to try and see if, it, and it did bounce out a, a lot more because I had the lighter color back there before I put the darker in. Yeah, and I, I'm not saying to put a lighter color; it's saying put a more well, I think beauty. The lighter, the, the 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 lighter or muted color that you're talking about, I had behind the trees, and they didn't pop as near as well as they do with the darker behind right. it. Yeah, okay. All right. So, so I purposely just went over it again with the darker one, but mm -hmm. I could see, I, I had it exactly like what you're talking about. I had the, except for the bottom, I had it the brighter blue in the bottom because it was closer mm -hmm. in the base, in the uh, water part in the bottom. Okay. But I know it's very illogical, but I just wondered it was if it's that illogical, I just wonder if I, I need to just work like uh, as you, I say lighten it up, but mute yeah. it more, I guess is a, yeah. And you know, if I were if I were gonna mute this area down, you know, yes. and and it being watercolor, right? Uh one yeah. I would work not real wet, you know, but just get a little bit of like orange, you know, in the brush. Yeah. Just a little, very thin, and just kind of wash a little orange into that, and that'll take some of the intensity out of it. Okay. 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 Now you don't you don't want to do anything in here because right. you want that dark here because that's right. kind of the contrast you're looking for. But right up right. in here, you could just you know mute that down a little bit, and it will sit right. back behind the trees, and then the trees okay. will pop forward, and then you could look at what happens in this area. You might have enough intensity in the color here to really make right. that pull forward then, okay? Right, okay. So. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the alternative, you know, yes. if, you know if you were willing to do it, is right. if, you didn't, if you didn't wanna change anything in this, which All I right. can understand, you know, you like it the way it is, is 
take another sheet of paper, do it again, but intentionally right. gray that back as you put the color in and mm -hmm. try to create more value and intensity contrast up in here so that that really pulls forward. Okay. Right. Right. And it, you know, it might be worth doing that. You know, it's a good experiment just to play with it to see, you know, how you can, you know, play and manipulate, you know, the right. color. Right. You've already got a good composition, you know, so that's all solved and, and you kind of know where you're going to go. And, uh, you know, it's just a matter of, I of tweaking. I want a small piece to see if I, how it looks, though, just out of curiosity. Hmm? Yeah, I mean, I don't know how big this is. And well, you know, it's 24, it's pretty good size. Yeah. Okay. And, and you don't have to. 14, it's easier to handle. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, not even that. You could do it, you know, like about a five by seven, just as a little experiment. Right. You know, the color and things would still work the same way. Right. But you could do that and right. see, you know, the effect yeah. that you get and which one you like better before you That's mess right. yeah before yeah. you try to modify or mess with that um right you know because if you go right. messing with it and you like it the way it is you know chances, chances are, <laughs> yeah chances are by the time you get done with it you won't like it <laughs> no i'll tear it up <laughs> yeah and we don't we don't want you to do that okay so well, i can always use the back side of the paper <laughs> uh-huh yeah but uh yeah but yeah just doing a little thumbnail something yeah. like that will accomplish the same thing you know it, it will it will let you see the things that you want or need to see there okay right, right. right. thank you yeah all right let me try that um is india here india hall for chance maybe sort of didn't see her so, well let's see who let's see who's here well, Gwen is here, Armando's here, Bob is here. Let's see, Eloise. Linda is here, okay, yay. Hi, Linda. Um, okay, so let's see, is there anybody else? Okay. Who are we missing here? James, uh... nope, okay. Yeah, Susan is here. Uh, Susan, did you come in late? No, I was here. I oh, was okay. here the whole time. Oh, I you heard were? you. I heard what you said. Um, I'm okay. just kind of quiet today. I've had a busy week. Um, we had to move, so, so we're we're in an Airbnb right now. So it's kind of a crazy week. Oh, but, um, I'm very tired. <laughs> All right. No. So, um. Yeah. Well, I'm glad so. you made it. Um, <laughs> Anyway, so this, this is India's, and I'm, you know, she sent this in. I don't really know quite what's going on. It's a, it's a fun piece. Uh, I'm just kind of wondering whether some of this is like collage or, you know, because, I mean, some of these textures and things like that look almost like they were stamped, you know. No, I, I think it's all, it's all painting. She's completed more than, than this right now. But she's uh -huh. got more. This one. She, okay. Yeah. I guess we'll have to wait until she's actually. Yeah, here. She worked on, she's got pebbles in the walkway and uh, uh, reflective light out of the doorway and things like that. So she's done a lot more. For this piece. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to kind of see where she's. Yeah. This one, this one looks confusing if you don't know what it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I mean, she's, you know, she's got a really good strong start on it. Got oh, great. Nice drawing. When you, you say it next, it's really nice. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of it kind of feels a little kind of like either French or or Italian. Yeah, yeah. it's a European, definitely. Yeah. But yeah, just the architecture and stuff could be, probably be part of Spain too. But yeah. Um, okay. So uh, then we have Mr. Ilan, and uh, this is his dream girl. Talk to us, Elon. Uh, I, it's been laying around for a long time. I tried to work on it in one of your classes two, three years ago. Okay. And I don't know what happened. 
So it was laying around at home. Yeah. And then I, I thought, okay, I need to go to get it going and put some paint on it, acrylic. Okay. And uh, that's what I'm in right now. I would uh, add to it or do anything you say. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm looking at it and it's, you know, it's very stylized, you know, and you've got kind of this dark, heavy outline. So it's almost like kind of a post-impressionist approach to painting. Um, yeah. You know, the color and the way you've laid down the paint, you got some nice paint surfaces going on here. Um, you know, I mean, I guess my question is, you know, what what do you want to do with it from here? Or, or do you want to do anything with it from here? I don't know. I hear what people say about it. Okay. Well, all right, so I'm, I'm gonna ask you a couple of things here, okay? Okay. So you've got this shape right here, this blue and then into the green, right? And to the me- The lady's shape, the, the lady's shape, I got the idea more or less from my friend Google. Oh, your friend Google, okay. <laughs> okay. But my question so is, I don't know who started it or anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, my question is, is this part of the lady or is this something in front of her? That's I don't me, know. Yeah, to me, well, yeah, but you're the artist, so you have to know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm an artist, uh, so you say so. Yeah, well, but you, you get to create your own world. So you can make it yes anyway. absolutely yeah you can make it any way you want to so this looks like something in front of her or a yeah. bed cover or something it could be but it looks it looks like to me and that's her body her hip with her leg yeah raised. yeah it does to me too yeah it looks like her hip hmm. well and then that's her leg foot behind her so she's got her leg up and pushed up and back. Yeah. Up. Okay. Yeah. Somehow I thought that was a pair of skis or something. Yeah. Maybe maybe she's <laughs> wearing skis um, and got her leg lifted or something. I don't know. But yeah, I was kind mm -hmm. of reading this part as maybe being something in front of her. Okay. Uh, I think if, so too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if that were the case, you know, then that dark outline might come around. Mm -hmm you know, in front of her, see, okay. rather, rather than stopping at the edge, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and kind of make that a complete shape, right? Yes. Because she's all kind of these warmer colors, you know, the reds and purples and oranges and stuff. And then this is all very cool, you know, blues and green. Um, but, so that's, but, that, but, that's, but that's probably why they say that that's her heel rather than in front because the outline is there the, mm -hmm. the initial outline is up on the hip and then it goes to the leg right. the leg is kind of thin yeah yeah well yeah well we don't we don't know what the rest of the leg does out here you know evidence <laughs> evidently she's got some pretty thick thighs you know if that's <laughs> kind of the thigh in the hip area um and then that's probably the foot and that's a ski on it or something i don't know um you know, you can interpret it many different ways, right? <laughs> so you can make it whatever you want, okay? Um, all right, so, you know, that's one thing. You know, you might go ahead and just complete that and make it a shape, and that will move her back a little bit, right? Because something's in front of her. Yes. And then my next question is, um, again, you know, with this outline, it's like, for some reason, you just abruptly stopped it right there. And I guess my question is, why does it not go all the way out here to the edge? Because you've got everything else outlined. Why, why not that yeah. one? Way? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I 
you know, I would just, yeah, I guess if I were doing something like this, I would make that consistent, you know, so that, well, that okay. line, line runs back to Heim. And then well, okay. the, the last and final thing, okay? All right, let's talk about, she's either wearing a hat or she, it, or it's her hair. Yeah. Or, or she's got some very interesting makeup on. Okay. So I guess you get to pick which one. Um, Looks like hair. Well, this part, yeah. Okay, again, you've got this dark outline right there. And that yeah. kind of separates this from all of this, right? And if, if I were going to say, okay, that this green, the blue, and the red were hair, then rather than a dark outline here, see, my outline would come up here and then follow the red, see, and, and make that a shape and connect, you know, with the hair coming down here, mm -hmm. see, rather than dividing the hair, you know, just let the colors divide it. You know, but again, you know, think of it as an overall shape. You know, the hair kind of here coming down this way and then back up this way. Um, and that's where I would have my dark outline kind of to the outside of it. And then I would just, okay. let it, you know, treat, treat it kind of the same way you did the body, right? Like here yes. in the body, you've got, you know, at least two values, you know, really three, right? And you don't have a dark outline in between them. It's just one color next to another, right? Where you had the outline was on the outside of the shoe. Okay. And I would kind of make it the same here. Okay. Let it let it be, you know, one big shape rather than dividing that up into different parts. Or if you are going to divide it, you know, divide it up in, you know, by color, you know, one mm -hmm. color next to another. And that way, you're really working with like three big masses of shapes here. You know, you've got the shape of whatever this is in front of her. You've got the body and the head itself. And then you've got the hair. Okay. And so that's kind of your three elements in there. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, and I'm going to, kind of say the same thing to you that I said to Gene, right? Rather than go back in and work on this, okay, what I would do is I would do a couple of little pencil thumbnails and do a little bit of drawing or just a, like a, a, a how big is this? It's not big. It's 11 by 16. Okay. Yeah. So I would do like a four by five, just a little sketch, right? And try it a couple of different ways and see, you know, which one you like the best. See, okay. you know, you know, play with, you know, trying to put the lines in or changing, you know, changing okay. where the lines are and, and see if that works better before you change this. Okay. Okay. All right. See, and that way, you know, maybe you'll come up with a couple of different solutions that you really like. All right, thanks. Yes, experiment. Okay. All <laughs> right, so now we're going to talk to Mr. John Gigliotti. Where to begin? Mm. All right, we'll start <laughs> from the bottom. Okay. <laughs> so here's a landscape that John did. And let me see. Okay. Um, so this is a watercolor. And now I'm guessing this is your reference for that, John? Yes, correct. Okay. That, uh, that's a photograph uh, from a friend of mine took uh, in uh, Wisconsin. Oh, okay. Pretty sky, you know. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me ask you something about this, okay? So this is the photo reference. You, you notice how dark the trees are? Yes. Do you know why they're that dark? The line behind the trees. Yeah, they're in the shadow of the basket. Well, yeah, they're silhouetted because all of the light is in the sky. Right. And so, you know, basically you get a little bit of color, but for the most part, it's just a really dark value, right? Right. Okay. 
and then we look at your painting. It's light. It is light. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's kind of like you're saying that you got a sunset back behind all of these, right? But then right. it's kind of like the light is coming from where we are, all right? Because it's right. lighting up the side of the tree that we're looking at. And let's see. Yeah, I'm, you know, I guess my, I guess my suggestion would be to keep the light in the background. It's like, yes, these can be green, but they need to be a closer value to this dark right here. Yeah. Okay. And we don't, you know, we don't need to separate out the trees as much, you know, as you've got them, because again, we're really just seeing a silhouette. And if you, if you start seeing a lot of detail on this side of the tree, what that does is, again, that tells you that the light is not, you know, not in the right place. You know, right. Not where you told us it was. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I mean, you can have some change in value, but not a lot. You know, if, if the light's behind something, then it's behind something and it's going to make it, you know, pretty dark. Okay. Yep, I agree. Uh, I knew something was not right, but I, I didn't, didn't quite grasp it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, you know, and I mean, now there's some things that really work really kind of nicely here, which is, you know, where you've got the light, you've got the color. And the thing is, if you make these darker, then this will look brighter and lighter. Mm -hmm. See? It'll give you more of that light effect that you want. Okay. Um, okay. And I like the way that you've treated the snow. So you've got a lot of color in that. And there's just these little kind of touches of like brighter white where, you know, the, the surface of the sh snow changes and catches mm -hmm. a little more light on it. And so all of that yep. really works really well. And if, if you just kind of darken these down, you know, I think you'll get, you know, what you're looking for. Yeah, I see that now. I agree. Okay. Um, and then we have your street scene. Okay. Yeah. And so I guess my question is, you know, where, where I want to focus is between the two buildings and this edge of the building yes. right here. Right. Right. right, because you you didn't really finish. Correct. You know, was the idea. Right, right. That was the idea. That was the idea. Just, just to focus on this, that uh, center. Okay. Uh, All right. Well, I guess what I I would kind of suggest uh, to make this look just a little more complete, okay, is don't finish these windows, but you know, put in some you know, just some indication of the line work and stuff. Even if you did it like in pencil, you know, like you just kind of penciled it in. Mm, um, okay. So you got a, a better clear idea of, okay, there's a window here. And I don't know if there are any windows over here, but you know, it could go from, you know, being rendered to just, you know, kind of lightly sketched in. And, and that way it kind of completes the building and the concept without you having to, you know, overwork these things and your focal point is still right in there. Okay, okay so just basically pencil in like the shapes, but mm -hmm. not... Uh... Yeah, not a lot of the detail or anything, but it just, again, gives us a little clearer idea that, okay, there's another window there, right? But, but the part that you focused on is right here where you wanted to focus on, okay? Um, then we have this lovely lady, okay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, where is she from? I don't know. I'm thinking a uh, Slavic country. Yeah. Yeah, maybe there, Turkey or somewhere, you know, in that area. Okay. Yeah, because the costume, you know, the, the head, you know, the head right. and stuff like that are all kind of interesting. Um, Okay, and I'm guessing that was, that was when we were doing lips, and instead of just sending in separate lips, I thought I'd put a face around it. <laughs> okay, all right. 
So, you know, let's talk about her lips then. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. she, she's She's got kind of an interesting expression, kind of like, uh, you know, uh, like, kind of like you would see on the docks of New York, you know, it's kind of like, ah, oh, hey, buddy, you talking to me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, she's got a bit of an attitude to her, which is, you know, which is good. You know, you're, you're getting some expression and stuff on, on the face. Um, now, I'm guessing she was a little bit older, right? That's correct. Okay. Uh -huh. Um, yeah, because she doesn't look like a young woman. Um, she looks like an older woman. Um, well, even when I young women, they look old. So. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Even when I do young women, they look old. Oh, okay. I see. <laughs> you, you, have, you have that issue of aging people when you do them, huh? Right. So I feel I just go right to the source to make it old. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, is that, is that something that you're happy with or is that something you want to change? I'm satisfied with it. <laughs> no, no, no I, I, not her. I'm saying the fact that when you paint even younger women, you make them look older. Is that something you want to do? No, it just sort of happens. Ah. All my, all, yeah, all my children, if you recall, the ones who did it, your children and your nieces and daughters and whatever, they all ended up looking about 30 years older than they are. <laughs> okay, yeah. And do you know why that is? Um, I think I get too much detail, too harsh of the values. That very well could be. <laughs> that very well could be, yeah. Maybe, maybe a little bit, uh, maybe too many sharp edges, maybe a little yeah. too much value contrast. You know, maybe too, you know, not soft enough, you know, blending and transitions, um, you know, from one area to another. Um, so, yeah, all of those things can make, you know, whoever you're painting look a lot older. Yes. So, yeah. So just keep that in mind and, and try to be, you know, if you're trying to make somebody yeah. look younger, yeah. then try to keep it. But this was, this was intentionally old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'm I'm not talking about her, but I'm saying when you yeah. try to paint somebody who's young, you know, try to keep it a little softer and you know maybe yeah. softer transitions, things like that. Yeah. Okay. And then last but not least, okay, we have this. Looks like is this Chicago? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought I recognized the building with the uh, two big yeah, towers. Okay. One recognizable building right now. That's what I wanted to sort of, the whole idea was that that would be an emphasis sort of like uh, in the Wizard of Oz when they come to Emerald City, you see the, the, the jewel green Emerald City in the back. Mm -hmm. uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to sort of convey the of cold and ice and desolation. Well, you know, I think you did it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 I, I, when I look at this, it's like, I'm glad I'm not there. Yeah. <laughs> it, looks, it looks just a little bit chilly, you know? Um, <clears throat> yeah, it kind of looks, looks like, you know, definitely the, the place is kind of socked in and frozen. And yeah. like I said, it it looked like Chicago because of the, you know, I kind of recognized the building. Yeah, the old Hancock building. Yeah, yeah. Right. Now, you know, overall, just, you know, forgetting about where this is or anything else, you know, just talking about mm -hmm. the composition and how things work. Um, you actually did really well with this one. You know, you got all of this to sit back in the background. And so you've got some things that are, you know, back in the distance. You know, things start coming forward, you get to the mid ground, uh, and then you get this bridge or roadway here, you get some water with a reflection in it. And all of this, because of the shapes and the composition of it, it all kind of pulls forward so that, you know, you feel like this is much closer to you and that these are sitting back and away from you. So as far as, you know, handling the depth 
you know, and getting distance and stuff like that, you know, you you pulled that off really nicely in this one. You know, actually much better than you did in your other landscape that you sent. Yes, in right. right. <laughs> yeah, and even in this one, you know. Um, right. So you've got, you know, you've got a good amount of depth in here and, and that works. You know, it's kind of the way that you modified your color and how you've got it kind of set in there. You know, it's all it's all working pretty well for you. Okay. So okay. Yeah, good. I like no, I like as soon as I thought if the, if the building were too warm. <laughs> yeah, I think well, you know, because of the contrast, I mean this is really the only warm area of the whole painting. Right. Right. And yes. and it draws your eye right to there, which is your focal point. Right. Okay. Yep. Now it could be a little too warm, you know, and you could gray it down a little bit, but I, I wouldn't lose I wouldn't lose the change in temperature, you know, if I mm -hmm. were you. I would still, yeah. you know, let that remain overall warmer than everything else around it. Okay. Sure. So, you know, if you wanted to play with it, mm -hmm. tweak it and Kind of. No, I, this is what I'm, this when I finished. I looked at this. I thought I really, I really like it. Okay. Yeah. Then, <laughs> yeah. Then let it be what it is. Yeah. Um, yes, I, did, I did uh, in between classes. I think I spent a total of two hours on it. Mm -hmm. Is that? Okay. Yeah, but it works. I mean, you know, it does everything you want it to do, as far yeah. as you know, creating depth and space and stuff like that. So, all right. Anybody got anything else to say before we go away? I'm cold. What, what size is that, John? What size? It's, uh, Eleven by fourteen. Good job. Oh, I'm kind of small. Okay. Oh. You know, I really, I really like the lady. I like well. What yeah, I like that, about her is that's the lady. Really older lady. Because I have such a hard time doing. But then, yeah, because you can you see you can you see the top of the cheekbones and you know, you, you yeah. can see all the contours of the face on her, and I, that's what I have such a hard time with getting get faces contoured like that. Mm -hmm. I know you you say you, she's older, but I just, I just like the contours that you can see, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in contrast, yeah, she's smiling a little bit, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that, that took me about 10 hours in contrast to the, the other one with less than two hours. <laughs> mm -hmm. you, you, you can see her chin and everything, you know, how her this, mouth goes. This is a little bit bigger. Like, cheek, cheek, like she's got a little smile or smirk or something. Yeah. You know, I, I, just, I just love the way that's done. I got to learn to do that. <laughs> and yeah, you know, you can tell her head twist a little bit on the neck. This huh? is 12 by 16. Uh, a little bit bigger than the other. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Um, all right. So we'll we're gonna move on to Elsie. All right. Elsie, you here? I saw you earlier. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. So here's your. Uh, looks like you're doing ears and noses. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so. Hang on one second. I got to I got to mute Susan. <laughs> if I can find her. If she's on the phone. Where are you? There's okay. Come on. Susan are there. Where are you? I'm here. Well, you know, you're Elsie, right? I was yes. Looking. Yeah, I was looking for Susan because she was talking on the phone. Or oh. try to meet her. Um, at any rate, okay. So, you know, this is this is from one of the Friday drawing classes, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I definitely recognize that face. You know, so mm. you got you got Maria's you know nose and facial structure there. Um, okay. So most of the drawings look pretty good. You know, you've got kind of a nice sense of shape and form, you know, even though this is all line. Um, you actually do a really nice line work. So, mm. you know, maybe line is your thing. Um, 
You know, you got a nice ear there. You got um, you're sitting on the side of the head, though you kind of squished the head together a little bit there. That's two different things. Oh, it's two different things. Okay. All yeah. Right. yeah. So this is the eye socket and the nose, and then this is yeah. the ear. Okay. All right. I was yeah. kind of reading it as being attached. You know. No. With the eye missing, but okay. All right. I get you. Uh, let me hide that so I can see. All right, and with this, you know, you've got the bridge of the nose and kind of the connection from the eye sockets down to, you know, the orbit of the mouth. And you've got, uh, you know, you've got sort of the, the areas where, you know, you get the smile lines, you know, in the cheeks. Um, the only thing I'd say is, again, you know, you've got the mouth on there. And if you just cover up the mouth, right? Then the nose and yeah. the eyebrows, all the eye socket work really nicely. But with the mouth, you know, one, it seems a little bit off center. And then number two, it still feels kind of flat right there. Okay. Yeah. And we probably weren't doing mouths at that time. So no. you just put it in. Oh. Yeah. Here, your mouth actually kind of wraps around the form a little bit. And that works pretty nicely. You know, again, kind of the structure of the far side of the face sitting back behind the bridge of the nose and, uh, and the orbit of the mouth. You know, so all that works really well. Okay. So yeah, good work on that. And then we've got, here we have lips. Okay? Yeah. And you decided to do these in color. Now this is watercolor, right? Uh, yeah, water, pencil. Oh, okay. Watercolor uh, pencil. Watercolor pencils, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'm not quite sure what's going on with this one. You know. Me neither. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. It kind of felt a little bit kind of hmm, something going on, kind of odd with her lip there. Um, yeah. But you know, this this set of lips worked pretty well. You know, the shape of this works pretty well, and you've got some of the underlying structure showing, so it feels mm -hmm. like it's sitting on something. And the difference between the two of these, or this is really kind of nice and clean, but this feels like it's actually attached to a face. This one is just kind of floating. Yeah. You know, same with this. And the key thing, you know, a lot of people focus on the lips, right? Because when you think of a mouth, that's kind of the part that you really see. Uh, the part that kind of goes away, that's hot, hiding from you, is this part right here, which you've got you know, which is this round shape that the lips actually sit on. And in this case, see, you've done a nice job at really getting that kind of feeling of, this is kind of protruding from the rest of the face, right? It's coming out. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the lips are part of it. Uh, you know, you've kind of pulled it off here too, right? Mm. Yeah. And right. so any anytime that you're doing lips, or we should say mouths, um, you know, keep in mind that you, you need to kind of include some of the actual structure, you know, around it to make it feel like it's actually sitting on something. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's talk about this young lady. We've seen her before. Yes. Yes. Okay. So this, this is another, mm. another go at doing your daughter, right? No, me. Oh, it's you. It's me. Okay. It's, it's a younger version of you. Well, <laughs> I did it in watercolor pencils, and okay. I was I was ruining the texture of the paper. So uh, then I covered it with the face skin in mm -hmm. acrylic, and I lost all of my wrinkles. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and your nose is kind of blew, blew it out too <laughs> yeah 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 well you know elsie if if you could just package that you could sell it to most of the women in america surgery has less cost that's right yeah i agree <laughs> it's me i feel like i have a nose though <laughs> yeah yeah you could be you you could end up quite wealthy that way actually so <laughs> yeah there's, there's a lot of women out there looking to do that um okay um so this is a mixed media piece so it's watercolor yeah. and acrylic 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. And and guess what? You know, that's perfectly fine. You know, you can do a mixed media piece like that. And uh, actually, you know, the fact that you laid in, in the skin tone, okay, and it's kind of even and kind of flat is good because you're working with these watercolor pencils, right? Right. Well, watercolor pencils are just like color pencils. And yes, you can thin them with water. Do you have to thin them with water? No. See? Oh. And now that you've got this acrylic base, you could come back in with your same pencils, right? And, you know, yeah. you could kind of, you know, put in, you know, some of the little more of the detail. You can actually use them if you do it very softly. You can put in some nice sort of soft gradations and, and tones and, and build up the volume, you know, in the face. Oh. And the volume. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, those watercolor pencils, you know, are really kind of nice because they can be a pencil, but they can also be, you know, something that you can use as a wash as well. So uh -huh. they're pretty versatile, right? Yeah. And, you know, I like what you've done with the, uh, you know, the shirt and the folds and, you know, overall, everything's working pretty nicely here. You just need to get in some variation here to yeah. get that face to sort of turn, right? Uh -huh. and let me point out one thing. Teeth. Oh. Teeth are never white. Ah. They're just not. Okay. You know, even even if you just came back from the dentist and, and he bleached them and everything else, they're never going to be white. They're always yeah. going to be this kind of very kind of slight pinkish gray most of the time. It kind of looks like they're sticking out. It does a little bit. And yeah. And They're the reason being, yeah, the yeah. reason being is that the value of them is too light. So if, if you just gray them down just a little bit, okay, uh, uh -huh. I'm not saying make them black, okay, just <laughs> put a very slight tint of gray on them. They'll kind of calm down, and they'll sit mm -hmm. inside the mouth. Then, okay, yeah, good. All right. Okay. But yeah, you, uh, yeah, you, you know, you're on track. You know, you just. Got to go a little further with it, okay? Okay. All right. And uh, yeah. let's see. All right. Oh. So, yeah. Good, good work. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Now, Eloise. Is Eloise mm -hmm. still with us? Yes, she is. Yay. <laughs> okay. All right. So you already know what I'm going to say about, you know, a couple of these, right? Like this one and this yeah, one. Yeah, I thought we were just drawing lips, so I didn't include the rest of the face. Yeah, any, well, Anyways, you don't need the whole face. What you really need mm -hmm. is you need the orbit of the mouth, okay? Which you have here. Yeah. And you have here. Yeah. And you have here. Okay? Yeah. You got a structure to put those on top of, okay? Mm -hmm. Um. And, you know, as far as your rendering and drawing of each one of the lips, you know, I mean, they're fine. Very, These yeah. work better because they feel like they're wrapping around something. Here, we don't really quite know, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you know, you've got some nice drawings. It's just, you know, the, the key of doing those features like the nose, the mouth, the eyes, the ears was to give each of you kind of an understanding of the fact that it's not just it's not just that feature it's how that feature actually sits on the face you know how it kind of is integrated in there um so that it feels like it's got some form and some structure to it and that's why we were kind of doing those okay okay but yeah nice and these are in uh, graphite right or are they in charcoal? Uh, yes, yes. Graphite. I guess it's graphite. I don't know. Let me see. It's graphite, I yeah. think. Yeah, because you got some nice, you know, you got some nice effects in there of, you know, where you've laid it in, you softened it, you come back in, kind of built up the edges and things. Um, so you've got some nice contrast between hard and soft edges, things like that going on. I think it's mixed with charcoal too. Yeah. But yeah, you handled it really nicely. So thank you. Okay. All right. Um, okay. 
so I put some things in there, but we'll talk about those after we talk to Bob. Bob, you around? I'd be here. Okay. <laughs> Bob, you still have that truck? Uh, that's not my truck. I, I found out the whole story. I th th this is the th this is the kind of thing that makes a person who thinks they're an artist happy, because I I sent the the Christmas card to a friend of mine because he had posted this truck picture of a truck and I was making fun of it on him because it's an old truck. Anyway, what what it didn't belong to him. It belonged to, to a fr a friend of his who lives in South Georgia. And the guy is in his 80s and he uses this truck. I mean, he's still working. He, he does landfills and, and uh, uh, landscape work and he's in well and up into his 80s. Mm -hmm. So I did this Christmas card for him. And uh, he, my, my friend, framed it, took it down to South Georgia and gave it to him. And, and the guy was just absolutely just thrilled with it. So anyway, that's the kind of thing that makes you feel good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that yeah, turned out to be a nice piece. And then this is the uh, little uh, thing, I guess, that your friend mm. Bruce sent to you. Yeah, Bruce. Yes, he did. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So anyway, yeah. say the trucks have been in service for 60 years. So. <laughs> and, you, and you included the original picture in there, too. You know, well, he, he, I like, he I like did. that little touch. Oh, he did. Okay. Yeah, my my friend had this this thing framed the oh. the, the half Christmas card and the picture of the truck. He had that framed, and then he gave it to the the old guy that that has the that really owns the truck. That's really and, and the frame is really a nice touch. Put putting that in the frame together, and then the frame color. It does. Yes. yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Really beautiful. Yeah, it worked out really nicely. So, yes, we would we would all like to get a few of those every year, you know. Somebody somebody who's appreciating your art. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so here's your cactus. You know, we we yep. got. Oh, okay. There's that yes. uh, that point. What's that thing you were looking at this morning? Pointillism. 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 Yes, that's his pointillism. Right. Yes, so here's Bob's yeah. approach to point, pointillism, you know, and it works really nicely, see? Yeah. I, but, I, but, but I did think the point of pointillism, though, was to use uh, warm and dark colors together to give, to give a specific effect, like, like in the, uh, mm. the cactus itself. He, mm -hmm. I guess he's using greens and yellows. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. A little, a little mm -hmm. uh, light grays are in there as well. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe some blues and things like that. Yep. Yep. Right. Yep. Yeah. And, and the the the, the uh, drawing, I mean, the, the photograph I I used as my reference reminded me of when I was a kid, and we lived uh, out in a, a neighborhood, a, a small town in northern Ohio that didn't have a lot of um, arbitrary light at night, and you could actually see the Milky Way. Uh, which you can hardly see anymore, except if you go. And so this this particular this particular photograph reminded me of being able to see the Milky Way uh, at at night. So that's there you go. <laughs> yeah, it says to the Milky for you. Yeah, it's a, a memory for you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's a lot of work. <laughs> that is a lot of work, but. What is this in acrylic? Uh, yes, I did this in acrylic. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think if you're trying to do that in oil, it would drive you crazy. Just kind of waiting, mm -hmm. you know, for the layers, yeah. you know, not to mix yes. together. Um, but you know, the effect is real nice, and it's got, you know, when you look at it overall, it's got this kind of nice soft effect to it. But there's mm -hmm. something about you know the fact that it's broken up into little you know, little bits of color, it has movement to it. You know, it kind of vibrates a little bit and, and kind of, you know, it just, it's kind of an interesting optical effect, you know, that not only do you get the shape and the value and things, you also get, you know, a, a sense of vibration, you know, 
I, uh, out of it as I well. Did a, I did an underpainting of this with, with something called uh, ink temps, which are ink blocks that you use uh, that, are, that are colors and you, and I used that, I made an underpainting with that, those ink tents colors okay. before I did the over thing with the- With the acrylic? With the acrylic, yeah. Okay. So in fact, it's a mixed media piece. Uh, yes, yep. Okay, all right. And how big is this? Uh, 11 by 14. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, even at that, I mean, how, how many hours does it take you to do this? Well, it took me about uh, maybe three, four days of work on the you know, three, oh. four hours a day on it. Okay. Yeah, I would have expected a little bit longer, actually. But yeah, you, you evidently move faster than I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was a, total, a lot of experimentation using various methods to actually put the, the blobs of paint on, on the surface. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had a lot of different tools I was trying out. Uh, to do this so yeah yeah i i like the surface you know i like the surface a lot you know it's like each of your colors you know they they have a, almost like a little bubble or a little bead you know? yes yeah yeah they they jump up off the page just a little bit they right do. yeah they're you know they don't just lay there flat you know they actually have a little bit of form to them so mm -hmm. nice yeah nice mm -hmm. nice piece of work there we go. All right. Um, let's see. And then we have this is a drawing. Now this is your pointillist head. Yeah. Yeah. This is the uh, what 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 you call it? Um, Stippling. Yeah. Stippling. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Mm, that's yeah. interesting. Now is what what kind of medium are you using? Are you using graphite? You using this isn't pen. Uh -huh. I, actually, it was colored pencil is what I used on it. Okay. And, and I, actually, the color was kind of a, because it didn't show up at all well on there, but it was uh, almost a burnt sienna, maybe. Uh -huh. uh, hmm. Something of that range, but boy, you sure can't tell it from that. No, it almost looks like it's a black and white photo or, you know, it's, it's kind of grayed down a bit. Um, you know, regardless, though, it's... It's still, you know, nice drawing, and yeah. you see the this drawing would look very differently if it were done in line, you know, line and tone. Um, there's a softness that you can get with stippling that you don't seem to get a lot, you know, with a, a lot of other approaches to drawing and painting, um, and that's kind of one of the nice things about you know, approaching it this way is, is that you can keep everything very soft. Um, so like, you know, John was saying that every time he does, uh, you know, like a young woman, you know, how he ages her. Well, this is a, a good, you know, maybe a good approach um, because you're not making a lot of hard edges, you know, and you're keeping everything soft that, you know, you could actually you know, do a younger looking woman. And, and not, you know, not have her, you know, age by 20 years, you know, because you're drawing, so. Exactly what is stippling? What, do, how do you do it? It's like making little oh. dots. Oh. It's just, just like, using your thought, it's like making little thought, dots of paint, but in drawing it's called stippling because, you know, you're just using like a pen or a pencil or whatever just to make little dots rather than lines. But I thought that was pointillism. Well, if you're painting, it's called pointillism. If you're drawing, it's called stippling. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. The same basic effect, same basic approach, you know. Um, mm. You know, it's just one, one is for drawing, the other is for painting, so. Okay. 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 Yeah. So if you paint it, you call it how? Pointillism. Pointillism, okay. And if you're drawing, you call it stippling. Stippling is just a technique, you know? It's kind of like cross hatching or shading or, you know, um, yeah. Or, yeah, or, or contour line. You know, it's just, 
just kind of another technique or approach, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. And then last but not least, Bob, tell us what's going on with your bear and your salmon. Well, this, this is, I, I drug this, like you say, you put stuff away and then you take it back out again later. Mm -hmm. Well, this, this, is, this, this is a, one of the things I brought it back out again later. Okay. And it's, a, it's an evolving event here. <laughs> okay. um, I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm adding some rocks around the base of the, of the creek. I have worked, and uh, in fact, I've done some more work on the bear's face mm -hmm. uh, itself and, and trying to make the, the fur on his face be, be the dominant feature uh, along with the fish. But, uh, but so, so you see the, the more the grain of the hair uh, and, and the roughness of it. And, and then I've, I've got to gotta do the background more woodsy. Right. Um, so so my, my question to you is, now this is done in like pastel? This is best. Yeah, I'm doing this in pastel. Yeah. Oh, wow. All right. So let me, let me pull back on this just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to ask you to pull okay. back up to see the bottom. So, with what, mm -hmm. what you're, yeah, with what you're saying, okay, um, after you get, you know, all of your trees and woods and rocks and stuff like that in, okay. I mean, get it all in there first and then take like a really, really, really soft watercolor brush or, you know, something, uh, they call it a mop, right? It's like okay, a big yeah, I have those. Yeah, fuzzy yep. brush. And just right. very, very lightly, don't brush it, you know, side to side. Just take it and pounce it, you know, kind of like your stick, okay. right? You know, mm -hmm. and then, you know, do it a little bit in, in the area that you want to soften and then on a rag or something, you know, dust it out and then go back and pounce the next area. Uh, Cause you don't want to transfer a lot of the color from one area to another. You just want to blur and soften the edges of everything that you don't want, you know, to really be the focal point. Uh, and right. if you just, just, you know, just barely kind of very softly kind of take it back, you'll notice, you know, a real difference. It's kind of almost like, uh, you know, setting the aperture on a camera. You know how you okay. can, you know focus on a tighter area by changing the aperture, um, and it you know give you a, a similar effect to that. Okay. Okay. So, just another thing to play with. All right. Anybody got anything to say about the bear? No, just I remember that thing. Yeah. Okay. It's 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 been there so much it's unbearable anymore. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. All right. So um, let's see. I was going to show. I you have a question. Uh huh. I have a question. He said he used pesto to do the bear. Uh huh. I know I can use the oil acrylic to lift up those uh, hair on the bear, but how to use pesto to do it? I'm just wondering. Uh, I, I have a set of, of pastel pencils uh -huh. that, that, that I've fallen in love with. Yeah. And 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 you can do some really fine lines and and uh, basically do drawings with them and, and they, they look like almost a, like what you're trying to draw once you get done. So uh, <clears throat> yeah. pastels are fun to play with. They are a good medium. Okay, I would now, I now would they're try dangerous. <laughs> yeah, now they're dangerous. You got to be careful with them, okay? Um, because they are highly toxic, okay? Don't know whether you knew that or not, but they are. Oh. Yeah. Because, yeah, you told you know, us before. Yeah, yeah. So just, you know, maybe have a mask, gloves, okay? Because you're you're basically handling stuff like cadmium, arsenic, lead, <laughs> you know, all those fun little things that you really don't want to poison yourself with over time. So uh, just be careful, okay? And work mm -hmm. in a well ventilated room, okay? 
All right. Um, so I'm going to show you some paintings that I went back and I kind of played with. Um, this is a this is a piece that I actually did from life at Benson, and uh, never really quite you know finished it. It was close, uh, and it's uh, it's oil, and it's on one of those you know cheap little very flimsy boards uh, that I I would use for demonstration. But it actually turned out really kind of nice. Um, and I, I liked the painting. It, I just didn't really ever finish it. So just recently I went back in and I really didn't repaint anything. All I did was put in a couple of glazes. And uh, what I did is I basically glazed down the shadow side of the figure with kind of a violet color to cool the temperature down. And then on the warm side, or the light side of the figure, you know, I added in, uh, you know, like some warmer temperatures. And that's all I really did to it, you know, was that. And I just added in the little shadow behind her with a glaze. Uh, and then I, I changed the temperature of the background and cooled it off mm -hmm. a little bit more with a little bit of a glaze of, you know, this kind of blue violet back there. And uh, so, you know. Overall, kind of happy with it now. Um, this is another life painting that I did. We were out at uh, Morgan Falls, and this is Jenna. She was one of the models that worked for me over at uh, Benson. And we went out for you know a plein air life painting class. And uh, we found a really nice spot over there at the park in Morgan Falls. It's this big covered area that they've got picnic tables under and we could be out there all day and we didn't have to worry about it raining. And so we would set up the model and uh, you know the class would set up on a couple of the picnic tables all around her and we would stay out there you know, pretty much so the full day and paint. And uh, so this is one of the, the little paintings that I did out there. Uh, and this is oil as well. Now this is on like one of those hard panels um, and then, uh, last but not least, I did this, what, a couple of months ago? Yeah, about two months ago, when it was still a little bit warm and sunny out, and, uh, and this is a plein air piece. This is something that I actually did out on location, and what I've done with it so far, you know, uh, and it's done now, is I just knocked back the light yeah. on the water with a glaze, and uh, grade back this tree line so that these would pop out and come forward. And then mm -hmm. I grade this area back as well a little bit. Uh, added a little bit of light in here. And this is all with just, you know, glazes. Um, you know, there's no opaque, you know, thick paint in any of this. It's just, you know, just, just tweaking the color a little bit. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm happy with this, you know as it ended up now and uh you know i've got a i think i got the sense of light uh that was happening out there and this was later in the afternoon and uh i know gwen has been out there painting with me before uh claudia has uh you know we've all been down by that river you know many many times so uh and then the last thing i wanted to show was this and i showed this the other day this is a painting that I finished over the holiday and uh, it had sat around for quite a while, about two years uh, from the time that I had started it. So it was time to finish it up and, and I got this one done and I'm happy with this. This is, uh, yeah. 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 That's really nice, Charles. Yeah. Yes, it is. Beautiful, I love it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, this is my view off my back deck in the morning. You know, if I look over across the lake. So, uh, you know, it's a hard view to get used to, right? <laughs> Tough. Anyway, so that's that's what I wanted to share with you guys. Anybody got any uh, questions, comments, anything before we go away? See you in the morning. <laughs> well, okay. I'll see you in the morning, too. <laughs> okay. Guess what we're talking about tomorrow? What is it? Pushing paint around. So 
Yeah, it's painting and mixed media. And I've got a couple of artists that I'm going to, well, I had started to introduce them to you at the end of last year, and we didn't get to them. So I'm going to finish sharing that with you. And, uh, and then I might show you some more of some of the artists that we saw uh, today that were doing the pointless work. Uh, I might try to pull a few more pieces of theirs so you can get a better sense of the kind of variety of work that they did. Okay. But it should be, should be fun. Okay. I see a lot. It of always do. Yeah. I have a question, <laughs> uh, Charles. Yeah. Uh, recently I went to Blick and I found this uh, so-called water-based oil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wanted to yeah. know uh, because I, I always put off to do oil, but I thought of, I wanted to go back to do it. So I wanted to know what is the difference of the oil paint, which is not water-based. Mm -hmm. And if it is water-based, can I just wash it with water after I do the painting? Do I need a turbanize to do it? Or what? No, no. See, that's the advantage. Of no? The, yeah, it's what, they, it's what they, technically the name is water miscible oil. Okay. And it uh, was something that they started developing about 10 years ago, uh, specifically for people who had reactions to the odors and fumes of regular oil paint and thinners. And, uh, you know, I know a couple of different artists who have worked with it. I think at this point, you know, that the manufacturers, the people who are making it have made a wide enough uh, range of color and kind of worked out a lot of the early bugs in it. And uh, it's, it's, you know, pretty, pretty good paint. Um, so it's a nice alternative for somebody who doesn't want to work in acrylic because it dries too fast. Uh, and it, it shifts color. Um, and, and the oil will work just like oil paint. And the interesting thing about water miscible oil is that if you wanted to, you could actually thin it with turpentine if you wanted. <laughs> okay, you don't have to, um, you know. But it does clean up with soap and water. Um, you can paint with it just like you would regular oil paint. Uh, as far as doing glazes and things like that, I think you would have to have some kind of oil-based medium, you know, like a linseed oil or something like that. Um, and if you're going to do any glazing, you have to wait to the very end of the painting, because once you put that linseed oil on, then you can't put water-based paint over it. So that's kind of one of the drawbacks of it. Okay, but if if you well, the still murky like they used to be, they used to be um, go on, and they used to be so dark and muted or something. They they, I didn't like it. You didn't like what? You, the or the water oil based colors yeah. they were murky they were grayed down they weren't right bright and mm -hmm. like an oil painting or yeah. acrylic or whatever right. they used yeah. they, they were well if you if if you're a dinosaur like me okay and you can remember you know the beginning of when they first started acrylics you know selling acrylics in in art stores okay. yeah acrylics were kind of the same way you know, they look nice and bright on your palette. You put them on the canvas, go away for 15, 20 minutes, and you come back and your bright painting just turned into this gray mass, you know, because all the color just went away. Uh, they had that same problem with water miscible oils in the beginning. Uh, I don't, I think they've got that worked out now. So it doesn't do that anymore. You know, uh, like anything, you know, it's, you know, the, the product improves and gets better over time. And they've, they've been at it for about 10 years now. So they've kind of figured out how, how to get it not to be muddy looking. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, if, you know, if you're real sensitive to solvents and thinners and things like that, or if you work, you know, where you're indoors and you don't have good ventilation. Yeah. I, I think it's not a bad alternative okay so a couple stick to the acrylics <laughs> yeah yeah i mean you know to the dryness of it mm -hmm. now 
Yeah, I mean, actually, you know, I worked for with acrylics for years, and it's really one of the most versatile medias out there that you can use. Um, you can make it look like oil paint. You can make it look like watercolor. You can make it look right. lots of different ways. Um, right. And you can work really fast if you like working fast, you know. <laughs> Not me. Yeah. So I'm too old to be fast. Okay. Yeah. You know, some people are in a big hurry. They just want to get something down now, you know, and they don't want to wait. <laughs> they don't like things drying and stuff like that. So, you know, so acrylics, you know, seem to work out for them really nicely. Okay. At any rate, um, anybody else got any questions before we go away? One once, one twice. Nope. Bye. Thank Goodbye. you. Bye. I'll see you guys tomorrow in the morning. Okay. See Bye. you then. All right. Bye.